And so notice the one who comes from Basra comes, he says here, in righteousness, and he comes to save. Note that. Now, verse 2, this one who comes from Basra, the question is, why is your apparel red and your garments like one who treads in the winepress? Here's the answer. I have trodden the winepress alone, and from the peoples no one was with me. For I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury, and their blood is sprinkled upon my garments, and I have stained all my robes. For, it says in verse 4, the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. So here we have this imagery of the wine press. Now in ancient times, they actually extracted the juice or the blood of the grapes uh, by stomping. They would take their Air Jerusalems off. They would wash up their little toesies. And then they would have a grape squishing party. It was a festival. And they would put the grapes in a wine press and they would jump up and down. They would squish the blood out and then it would run out of a funnel into a container and they would then extract the blood or the good stuff. And so he uses this imagery here speaking of the day of his vengeance. Now notice with me, verse 4, we understand this to be the Lord's return and it is his return for vengeance it is speaking of his second coming. And if you see in verse 4, it's the day of vengeance. Go back with me then a couple chapters because you remember in chapter 61 of Isaiah, this chapter in verses 1 and 2, the Lord used when he gave his inaugural message at his hometown synagogue of Nazareth, Jesus was asked to speak. And he turned in the scroll of Isaiah to what we have as Isaiah 61, and he read this of himself. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, verse 1, because the Lord has anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And there it says he closed the book. But notice that he closed the scroll or the book in the middle of what we have as verse 2. Because it goes on to read, and the day of the vengeance of our God. Why did he close the book? Because he was speaking of his first coming. And he did not come at his first coming for vengeance. At his second coming, vengeance is my, as mine, saith the Lord. And so, now we read about his vengeance. Now, when we think about the wine press, you need to understand that the wine press in the Bible is a metaphor for judgment, for the judgment of God. And I want to go to two different places for you to see this. I have just an excerpt there on the left-hand side of your screen, but I'm going to go to Revelation 14, and I'm actually going to start reading in the 14th verse. And it reads like this. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and on his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud. And he said, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And so he sat on the cloud, and he thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had the power over fire, and he cried out with a loud voice who had the sharp sickle to him who had it. And he said, hey, thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And so, verse 19, the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the, note this, the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, that's of Jerusalem, and blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridles, 1,600 
furlongs. That's about 183 miles. Now turn with me a couple pages to the right. Verse nine, uh, chapter 19, verse 11 of Revelation. And it reads like this. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Stop there. In our verses, in Isaiah, how does he come from Basra with the blood sprinkled on his robes? He comes in righteousness. And here we see the one who is faithful and true. And in righteousness, what does he do rightly? He judges and he makes war. And his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written on it that no one knew except himself. And notice his clothes were a robe dipped in blood. Why do you come from Basra? Why are your clothes stained red? Here, his clothes are dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, by the way, that's us, followed him on white horses, and now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it, he would strike down the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron, and he himself treads, notice, the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 